Hello again. I wanted to just do this um, more formal run through of the course and make you aware of how you're going to be graded and what's in, in the course. So it's me again, Dr. Julie Alexander. Uh, when you email me with questions, which you're free to do as much as you want, I pretty well answer emails seven days a week up until about 9 p.m. But weekends are fine. Um, could you please just put in the subject which course you're in because I have multiple courses and then I don't know who's who. And in D2L, make sure that any news items or emails that come from D2L or go to your email account that you actually look at. I do have a personal website, but I won't be using that very much this term because we have D2L. So in the course, it, there's no getting around some of these preliminary topics which you may find a bit tedious or boring or difficult, but we really can't do any biomechanics until you're pretty good at your calculator, that you know about units. Um, we're going to have to review some algebra. It's very basic algebra that you need to know, but we'll go over that. And then trigonometry, which is the mathematics of right angle triangles. And then we'll dive right into forces. And forces are the crucial thing to understand. Their direction, their magnitude, what kind of motion they produce, where they come from. Are they in your body? Are they outside your body? So we'll spend a good two weeks looking at forces, doing lots of diagrams. And then we'll do um, just a small unit on pressure and center of gravity, which is so important when you come to balancing or um, figuring out how your body's going to move or rotate or fall over. And then another huge chunk of the course is torques. And basically what a torque is, it is the um, it forces cause torques when they are away from an axis of rotation and they cause, they try to cause rotations in your body. And if you think about it, pretty well everything you do is some kind of rotational motion, like all of your limbs swing about your joints. So torques are really important. And then we'll just briefly do some kinematics, which is if you've ever taken physics before, this is probably where you started your physics course. It's the topic that pretty well turns everybody off of physics at some point. But we do have to do a little bit of kinematics, which is describing the motion that you have generated now with these forces and torques. Then we'll talk about Newton's laws. And then lastly, we'll do stress and strain, which has to do with um, your bones and how much they stretch or compress or break, depending on the forces that are applied to them. So what you need to do is buy a calculator if you don't already have one. And these two I've written here, Sharp EL531 and the TI30 are ones that I've just found that students have most often. Um, anyone that's similar to that, but you have to make sure it's a scientific calculator. So you have to make sure there's a sine cos tan, an EE button, and things like that. You'll also need to download Canovia, which is um, free open courseware. And it's what you're going to be using to do your labs. So you all have to download that onto your computer. And you just go to canovia.org to do that. And then also make sure that you've got it sorted out how you're going to scan, for example, a test. If you're doing a test at home and you need to scan the pages and send them in, uh, make sure you know how to do that. So the course outline with all the rules and regulations and the how, you know, what an A plus is worth, what an A is for birth, are, it's on D2L. Your grade, this is how it'll be uh, evaluated. So every Friday you will hand in an assignment and you'll do that in person. When you go to your lab with Connie, you'll bring your handwritten assignments nicely written out, not, not, not typed out and on loose leaf paper, single-sided, and you'll put them in a box and I'll come and get them and mark them. Uh, there'll be three term tests, which of course you'll have to do at home. One of those tests will be during your exam week that where all your other courses will be giving you exams as well. And then we do have a, a lab component. This is when you're gonna be using Canovia, 10%. And then the final exam during exam period will be 30%. So I've organized the course extremely rigidly. Uh, on D2L, our checklists, they tell you exactly what to do during the week, 
leading up to that assignment, which may be multiple assignments that you're handing in on Fridays. So you will go to the checklist on D2L, it'll say, for example, a reading assignment, it'll say, open this chapter of the textbook that I've uh, put on D2L. As you read through it, answer these questions and write down the answers. Very explicitly, very like not difficult. You simply have to follow the instructions. Uh, I've made a whole bunch of videos of me doing examples and me giving little mini lectures, which I will direct you to in these checklists. You'll watch those. And then you will have problem assignments, which you will also hand in on that Friday. So a checklist might look like this on D2L. I'm not sure if you've used them before. It simply lets you stay organized. You do not get marked when you check off this, the checklist, like I don't, the marks are gonna be for what you hand in on Friday. So for example, this week three force vectors checklist, it tells you, well, it tells you to do this reading assignment. So all of these assignments and videos and everything is in the content area but I've just done a quick link to the checklist. So you never really have to go to the content area. You can just click on these. You'll see the assignment. It'll ask you a bunch of questions. You'll see the document you're supposed to be referring to and away you go. All of my videos that I've done, I've put on YouTube. I've also made transcripts of them. So while I do the video, I'm doing it in OneNote. And then if you don't wanna watch the whole video again, I've put the transcripts on in the content area and then you can just scan through them quickly and find the example that you want to know how to do again and have a look at it. So that really saves you a lot of time. You don't have to listen to the videos over and over again. So as I said, due dates are Friday morning. So half of you will be at 8.30, half of you will be at 10.30 as far as I know from Connie. And I've put a box, I've already put it there outside um, your, your lab where you'll be, the LACC 105. And so dump it in there before you go into the lab. I'll come by at about 9.30 and pick up the first lot that I've booked LACC 124, the lecture hall around the corner. I'm gonna go close the door, go in there. Um, I'm not allowed to talk to you actually. I'm not allowed to interact with students apparently. Now, if I happen to meet you in the hall or if you happen to poke your head in, I, I don't think anybody can do anything about that, but I'll be in there marking and then I'll bring the, the marked assignments back put them back in the box. When you come out of your lab at 10.30, pick your assignments up and off you go. The 10.30 people will drop theirs in. I'll come by a little after that and pick them up and do the whole thing again. Now you have, because I'm only coming to campus one day a week to get those assignments and mark them, I can't get them any other time. So if you miss that submission, then that's it. It's zero. Okay, and to, to really help me with the marking, um, which is a million times easier with these paper. To try to submit it all in detail and have me mark it is a nightmare. It takes me three times as long, takes you three times as long, and it's just really difficult. So if you can be nice and neat and tidy, write on single-sided loose leaf paper, staple everything together, put boxes around your answers, I will be giving marks for how well I can read through your stuff because it will be a fair bit of stuff every week. Okay, I've chosen three dates for the term test. These are not set in stone. These are proposed dates. We'll see how things go. We'll have the first one February 1st, and then we'll definitely have this one during exam week, February 22nd. You have a week off for reading break, February 15th through to the 22nd, and then we'll have our third test on March 22nd. The labs are all mandatory. You must pass them to do to pass the course. Now I'm doing, I have to do it completely differently now that it's online. Normally I would have you working in groups of three. You'd be making your own videos of some kind of sports activity like tennis or hockey or swimming or whatever that somebody that you know is good at. Um, but because that's, I can't help you with that because I don't see you. Um, I'm gonna supply you with the videos and the videos are gonna be me rowing on the, uh, a rowing machine, doing it properly, and then making mistakes, and then you'll go through and do the labs, analyzing the two. Um, I don't know quite how many there will be. There won't be very many, maybe five or six tops. So I know you're scheduled for alternate week labs, but we're just gonna meet probably six times to do labs altogether at the same time. The other Mondays, you're just 
you're on your own, do whatever you want. So there will be no synchronous lectures or anything like that. Like you don't ever have to be online other than the lab periods when I say we're doing a lab. So for example, Monday, January 18th, you must be there 1230 to 230. Um, the first day of class, I mean, if you've already listened to this video, you're welcome to come on January 11th, the first day of class, and I'll be on Collaborate. And if you have questions, we can chat, but nothing very formal. So I'll tell you, I haven't even um, sorted all those labs out yet. I've just done the videos, so I'll let you know. Okay, so that's it. Um, like I say, if you have questions and you want to talk to me, we can talk on Monday at 1230. Bye for now.